Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. The dice are finally done and so here's the video. Now the first attempt to 3D print these dice uh, ended kind of in failure. They're supposed to all have like a 45 degree angle on each side. As you can see these dice are incredibly square. Now the engineering th uh, thought I had was that so each dice will be very short with a 45 degree angle on each side and they will all slide together and create a perfect cube except for one piece of the dice which will have a giant well, square bottom that everything else will sit on top of so it's filled in the center. The problem is that there were some issues with printing where instead of coming out as a 45 degree angle it came out as a brick all the pieces so they could never slide together like look at this guy he's supposed to have a pretty large 45 degree angle up top and then lead to a much smaller square instead he's basically a solid brick and then look at this one this one is supposed to be complete smooth angles on the bottom but nope there's a brick coming out the bottom that's terrible I eventually figured out that despite the printer, not, despite the models when I designed them not having this and then the printer miraculously print them, I noticed that at the very end, uh, what right before the printing thing it would show me a pre-image of what the printing uh, would look like layer by layer and then it would show that it was going to print these giant cube squares and I wondered why. I looked at the software and uh, basically I use 3D Blender for this and basically some of the ways that I modeled these things create a spine so underneath uh, like this one is round right now that's because inside it there is an image or a, basically a model which is a numbers and a symbol and for some reason the computer recognized that as requiring a spine the printer more specifically and it creates this giant spine that goes all the way down to the bottom which is terrible so I had to basically delete all the designs that I had and I would remake the design piece by piece then upload it towards the printer and see what the final printed version would look like and this really slowed down the process because I had to do this for almost every single change to make sure that it would come out all right. Behold the ideal number one or piece. The top part is the 45 degree angle, uh, angles which all the pieces will have and the number one on the dice will have this giant block underneath it which is solid. I don't want it to be hollow just in case it would alter the weight. And these were the initial designs. The giant brick on the left, the first version, had uh, basically like a femur bone in the shape of a one and two plague bearers on the right and left. But unfortunately, the way this was designed, it created some just like, I don't know why, the printer required that it turn into a brick. So I tried to change a few things in the middle one, and it failed. And so I decided to scrap the entire thing and go from scratch, and I was able to create the one that would actually work and fit, which you have the bell there. Which, looking back, is technically wrong because there is their uh, banners that allow them to, when you roll a 1, the banner will allow you to get to get a D6 Plague Bearers back or one extra Plague Drone, depending on the unit. Now, due to the fact that these are very small pieces on the printer, I had to make sure that the bottom 4 or 5 layers would uh, cook. It uses light, UV light, and so the bottom layers are, like, cured much longer than the others and because of that they inflate in size as such every single piece has like this bottom area that is just big and out of the way and so I have to sand six pieces per dice 28 dice uh, like 128 pieces on four sides now after a ridiculously long time and over a period of a few weeks of printing in one case uh, printing every 30 minutes like 12 times in a single day cleaning up and reprinting I was able to finally make all the pieces 28 dice suck and also by the way for some reason only half of the dice would print on the tray on the left side of the tray there was nothing that could be printed on the right side everything was printed and so literally I could only work at half capacity there was a photon s by the way I have no idea why all the stuff would just come off but it would magically still work on the right side so a lot of resin was lost uh, in these attempts and it really elongated it as far as I can count I probably had to do around like 25 different prints 
All right, starting off, I had water, a uh, file, and some sandpaper. Now, I would use the file on some, and the water is very important because this resin is poisonous if it's inhaled, and so I would constantly dip each piece in the water to get it wet, and then I would file it so that the resin would not get into the air and get into my lungs. The sandpaper was a good start because I would just put it on its side and just swish, swish, swish and get it done. The problem was the water would eventually just like break the sandpaper, so I stuck with the file. Also note that when doing this, some of the pieces of edge were so large that I just took a knife and just cut off chunks of the edging on the base of the dice before sanding. Alright, after sanding a bunch of them, I begin to notice that for some godforsaken reason, there are holes that appear on either side of some of these dice. <sighs> so for each one that had a few holes, which was a lot of them, I then applied super glue to try to fill in the gap. I did this probably like two or three coats of super glue like into the hole from the bottom side to f make sure the hole was sealed because I was eventually going to fill these with resin and I hoped they wouldn't spill out. And then this is me sanding 168 actually more because I miscounted I accidentally did more than I needed 168 pieces by the end of this my fingers were hurting I had like a cut on the finger that was on the bottom because the sand actually sanded my skin off and the resin, which is the white stuff, which is hit with water, was everywhere. I had to wash my hands constantly. So this was a very painful process. After all that's done, I also rinse each of the pieces off to get rid of the resin. And once they're completely dried, I then prepare them for priming. I tape them up, and place them down, and then just prime. And well, this takes a while. And eventually they're all done. Now here's some interesting facts about dice. Dice actually, if they're made, depending on what materials they're made of, actually affects their ability to roll. For instance, the very best dice, the ones that Casino use, are clear dice, like the one on the right. Those that are clear dice are completely homogenous, there are no air bubbles, and there's no unevenness. The black dice, which is a Games Workshop dice, I've always noticed it favorably rolls in my favor for up but because it's material and stuff, it could be unevenly balanced. Like, there could be small air bubbles and stuff inside, which you would never know because it's solid black. Now, if we take a closer look, the top left dice, these are the most notorious types that are known to be uh, weighted because it uses different types of plastic or resin or whatever that are mixed together. The thing is, these have slightly different weights or stuff, and so you might get some of these beautiful colored dice like this that are actually weighted. I mean, not massively weighted, but they do slightly lean towards something. And here is where I notice a massive issue based from the printing. I have no idea how this happened, but some of them are bigger than others. I mean, the dice are pretty much the same, but they're not as deep for some reason. Like, some bottom layers just weren't there. As such, I organize all the dice and I try to make them as even as possible. Uh, so that there are some that are pieces that are very tall mixed in with some that are very small with each type. So that way I at least need one or two pieces of the dice to be perfect and then I'll just like float the rest on top with super glue. So then I begin the assembly process starting from the one and then starting with a big piece to make sure it's completely flush. And then I use a lot of super glue. I use a lot, a lot of super glue. And then once that's done I then apply super glue onto the edges with the brush. Uh, with a super glue brush to make sure like the edges are like sealed together. Unfortunately there are some that are just terribly separated. Some gaps are so bad that I just try to fill them up with green putty and then I seal them again with uh, super glue.
Now, I got a bunch of the failures, primed them, and I'm going to test them out because I've never actually used resin before. So I just throw on a bunch of different paints and stuff, different colors, and I want to see how they will react when they are sealed in resin. I did not get any footage of me actually pouring the resin for this, but this is before and then boom, after. The resin has a very interesting effect on it. It sort of makes it look matte, but it also makes all the symbols inside look a much flatter, like two-dimensional instead of three-dimensional. And I was surprised that some stuff really does work well. I look back and I notice after uh, priming them that just some of these pieces are just so uneven they're I don't know how that happened they're perfectly made in the software but they just sucked when they were printed so I then take the sander and I try to smooth them out and even them out so that there's no extreme hangovers or anything like that from the plastic All right, we're gonna start off with the number sixes. So with Pallid Witch Flesh, White Scar White, Plague Bearer's Contrast Paint, and Death World Forest, we're gonna get to painting. We're gonna paint all the dice with Pallid Witch Flesh as a base. And once that is done, we dry brush White Scar White all over it on the inside. We then apply two, count them, two, coats of Plague Bearer's Flesh all over to the entire inside of the dice, and it's okay if you get it onto the sixes and stuff. Looking back, uh, basically cover everything in it. I then take Death World Force, and that's the color I will use to apply to the rims. So before I continue, this is the first time I noticed this, but uh, I went to get Nurgle's Rot to replace the current one, and my Nurgle's Rot that I've been using for all my videos is a bright yellow. I get some from the store, and what is this? What is this? What the crap is this ugly looking thing? It looks just like Plague Bearer's Flesh. So this is a disappointment, so at this point I don't know what to do with it, so I just apply it into the center of the six. It was supposed to be a bright yellow in the six, but that sucked. And then I take Blood for the Blood God and I'm just going to apply it all over the sixes to make them appear very distinct. Now with Art and Glow casting and coating epoxy resin, I got it for like 40 bucks off Amazon. This is a pretty simple straightforward stuff, so I mix it up and I use a giant wooden spoon like thingy and then I just dip it in and just flatten it on each of the pieces. This is my first real pouring uh, in, on this level and it works pretty well. Now with a basic propane torch, I'm going to now apply it all over. Uh, this is pretty straightforward, it actually only needs to like hover over it for just like half a second and it pops the bubbles and just go back and forth once or twice until you stop seeing like little pops. I then take a close look inside and see that there are some large bubbles because you're supposed to pour from one corner and let it slowly uh, spread out, but because of the designs of these things, air bubbles can easily appear. So I stab at them repeatedly, but my goodness, these air bubbles are made of like rocks. They just won't break. So the best way I found to handle them is to try to push them towards the surface and then hit them with a second level of uh, f uh, torch. So well after 24 hours, the test pieces are pretty solid and you can like hit them and tap them. They're like a table now. Alright, with Mornfang Brown, Agrax Earthshade, and Lead Belcher, we're just going to paint the fives. We're going to keep it very simple. So after all the base coloring is done, the Plague Bearers flesh, the two coats in, and the Death World Forest is done on the edges, we're going to paint Mornfang Brown on the shields all over.
And then once that's done, we're going to add lead belcher all over the five. And once that's done, we're going to take Agrax or Shade and apply it on both. And once that is done, we're going to take Mornfink Brown and we're just going to paint straight lines down on the shields to like just pick out the edges and detail. And then once that's done, we're going to take a Lead Belcher and we're going to overbrush, sort of dry brush, onto the fives to pick out their shine. All right, after 24 hours and nice casting, uh, the five is done. Uh, the six also took 24 hours, so that was a huge time sink. All right, moving on to the threes. Now with Doombull Brown, Lead Belcher, Nuln Oil, and Rise of Rust, we're going to paint the threes. We're going to start with Doombull Brown, we're going to paint the tiny little shaft that comes out uh, towards the bottom of the three. We'll then use Lead Belcher on all the axe hafts. And once that's done, we'll then take a Nuln Oil and apply it all over the axe hafts. And then we'll apply Rise of Rust all over like, certain specific places, just have fun with it, onto the uh, axe heads. Sorry, I called them hafts, they're heads. Now with Xandri Dust, Skeleton Horde Contrast, and Plague Bearer's Flesh, we are going to paint the three. With Xandri Dust as a base layer, And then once that is done, we're then going to take slightly watered down Skeleton Horde Contrast and apply this all over. After the Skeleton Horde Contrast dries, I overbrush some Xandri Dust onto the flesh there, or to the threes. And then once that's done, I then take the Plague Bear's Flesh and then tap it into just random places to make it look like there are boils and stuff, to make it look sickly. The three is supposed to be flesh. I then seal them in resin. Now with Steel Legion Drab, Agrax Earthshade, and Bane Blade Brown, we're going to paint the ones. I'm going to take Steel Legion Drab and apply this onto the one in the center. I then apply Agrax Earthshade all over the one. I then go back to Steel Legion Drab and I just overbrush it onto the ones. And then once that's done, I then go with Bane Blade Brown and then I partially overbrush, partially just uh, draw straight lines up and down onto these ones and random places to pick out the edges. And I forgot to show it, but I take Vallejo Liquid Copper and I apply it all over the bell. I then got a little bit better at applying the resin, so then I take a little bit, have it onto the wood thing, or wood spatula, and then I let it fall in, and then I tap, tap, tap it into places. I move it back and forth, letting it spread out, and I repeat this process all over, and I make sure to apply it over onto the edges of the sides so that it covers the sides as well. Now, while this was drying, apparently it wasn't enough time for the th previous three to fully dry as such, even though it had been like eight or nine hours or like actually 12 or some hours beforehand the three still was soft enough that it slowly leaked out onto the side all right so in preparation for this project i picked up this 3m wet or dry micrograde polishing paper which goes from rough to very fine and i use one of the test pieces and i just sand on it repeatedly to see its effects and stuff
I then take a clippers and then I remove the worst offenders, the giant bulges that come out of the leak of the resin. So I take, uh, I've already applied Vallejo liquid copper onto the crowns. I then take Vallejo liquid old gold and gold. I'm gonna start with Vallejo old gold and I'm gonna apply it onto the four and to the edges of the crown. I then will take Vallejo gold and then apply it into the four and like some edging on the crown. Now after I've poured resin into the fours, what I am now going to do is I'm going to do the test pieces. Using the test pieces and this blob that I cut into, I'm going to apply resin on them and I want to see the effects of how it's like with, from the sanding and from cuts, how the resin uh, will react. And now with Xandri Dust and Skeleton Horde Contrast, we're then going to do the two. We then are going to take the Xandri Dust and apply it all over the skull in the back and the two. And when that dries, we're going to apply the Skeleton Horde Contrast onto uh, everything. I then find a small solution for my Nurgle's Rot problem. I then take Bombay Yellow India ink and I pour it directly into it. However, I realize that this probably has to be a one-to-one -one mix in order to get the Nurgle's Rot the right color. So while I mix in some, I then take the rest onto a palette and then add more India ink to get the right color. And then I apply this all over the twos. And after 24 hours, the result of my experiment is here. As long as the resin can get into every single nook and cranny, then it'll make it a perfect shine. There are some spots where the resin can't seem to penetrate, but that's because like it was broken and then the resin like resealed itself so you can see the cuts and stuff inside there, but the new resin can't actually get in there. So if the resin is able to get in there, it'll create a nice perfect shine. With the experiments being a success, we turn to our broken number threes. We we'll start off with the sandpaper and we're gonna start from the grittiest to the lightest and we're just gonna sand, sand, sand and get rid of the most of it. Once that is done, and well, the pieces are sanded and smoothed out of their weird rigidness, we're then going to take the Death World Force and then we're going to reapply paint where it needs to be. And then once that is done, we're then going to reapply the resin in very carefully this time. And we're going to let it sit for a long time. Two days pass, and now I decide to go and fix back some of the other pieces that just were bad. So I go over and I start applying more resin into some places that just were cavernous or did not come out right to fix them. So after all the dice are done, there are some that still need some finish, and I'm wondering if uh, I can polish them and maybe I don't need to reapply resin. So I take a Dremel drill, and I take some uh, paper towels, cut them into a circle, and then apply them onto their empty uh, drill head thing. Then I use it to buff the dice, and that slightly works for some. Some need more resin. I then spot apply resin where needed. This was a bad idea, it created uneven surfaces and it looks bad in the light. But what can you do?
Well, I'm calling it done here. Uh, every attempt I try to make to make to fix small things takes over 24 hours and sometimes I cause more damage in some places while trying to fix it. So like, I don't think I can get any better than this. Now what do the dice stand for? The 1 stands for when you roll 1 on the battle shock test, you gain more followers. Originally these were two plague bearers, so like a d6 plague bearers or one more plague drone. So that's what it originally stood for. The 2 is for if you roll this, you're screwed because there's almost no abilities to re-roll 2s. There's only a handful of them compared to all the others and none of them are in the mainstream They're uh, or the meta of the most powerful units. You have to choose very specific other things that kind of get in the way that really don't matter. The 3 is the to hit for the Blight Kings. The 4 is for the armor value of the Blight Kings, the Blight Lords, and for the characters and great unclean ones. That's their armor save. The 5s are for disgustingly resilient. Ignore all wounds on a 5 up. And then the 6. This is for the exploding 6s of the Blight Kings, and the bright red really makes it stand out. After all that work, some of the dice look really good in the light. You can see crystal clear finish, and some of them are pocket marked like anthills. Now the final question, how do they roll? Pretty well actually, they're pretty well balanced. I mean, I keep, I'm keep i always suspicious of those sixes that I get, are they artificial? But no, it, it rolls pretty well, it's pretty fair. And I'm calling it done. <sighs> this project took around three months. Three months. Many, many hours. And uh, the instructions on the resin said six hours before you could really move it around or apply new layers. That's a lie. You have to wait over 24 solid hours before you can even really move or touch it. Otherwise, it'll absorb a fingerprint. So. This project was very irritating. I really wanted to do it and it, I made the most of it, but I don't think I'm at a point where I could make it any better. Now, painting wasn't an issue. 3D printing was kind of an issue, but the biggest issue was the resin. 24 hours between each pour minimum, and in some cases, maybe I should have just waited a little longer. If I was to do this again, <coughs> I want to, but ugh, this was such a pain. I would design everything around the resin pouring. None of the pieces, none of the dice would be assembled until after the resin was poured. So I would have a huge plate of all the pieces out and I would pour resin in one go and then wait two days or so. And then they would come out fine and then I could sand the excess on the sides and stuff like that and it would be okay. So I was originally going to make Fire Slayer dice for my brother's birthday on the 1st of March. But this took three months to do, and his birthday is actually very close, so that's not happening. So he'll have a late birthday present. In the end, I'm going to have to say... I don't even know what to rate this. I'm just not going to rate this because it's more like it's done, but like... Meh. Ugh. This was... It started off as a cool idea, but man, it, it just got ridiculous. Ah. Yeah. In the future, I will try this again, but I will say, of all the ways I could have done this, I believe I did it the worst. Resin pouring should be the absolute big thing that you designed the whole project around. Alright then, well, like the video if you like the video, share if you want to share, comment if you want to nitpick or say something, like if you like the video, dislike if you dislike the video, and more to come that will be more pleasant. <laughs> Bye.